Okay, thank you. Right. Tales of death, phantoms and fear await the most haunted team as we journey to Lancashire. What's moving? Something's moving. Something's moving, yeah. and on this extremely cold day, I've brought my team to a place shrouded in mystery and full of paranormal activity. Welcome to Most Haunted and Hall in the Woods. Originally belonging to the Brownlow family, parts of the building date from the late 15th century. Over the years, what was a tiny habitation was gradually added to and split into tenements, one of which was tenanted by the inventor of the spinning mule, Samuel Crompton. By the late 1800s, with its cottages destroyed by a landslide, the hall had fallen into a state of terrible dilapidation. The tall, dark figure of a man has been seen pacing up and down here in the corridor. Some describe him as an Edwardian gentleman wearing a winged colour and a top hat. It is said that the apparition is Thomas Brownlow, a former owner of the hall. The sound of running footsteps are also heard when no one is here. The building boasts myriad tales of multiple haunting, including the ghost of Mary, assumed to be the wife of Samuel Crompton. Visitors report sightings of a peculiar white mist, a grey lady, strange lights, the sound of footsteps made by unseen feet, and doors slamming of their own volition. This bedroom is thought to be the most active room in the house. Many people, particularly children, tell of the fierce, ghostly woman who, after appearing, shouts at them to leave her place. One terrified child had such a frightening experience, he fled the room in tears and said the woman not only showed herself, but told him her name was Betty. It's thought that this might be Betty Vickers, a weaver who lived at the hall from the late 18th and early 19th century. Another phantom that is thought to wander this room is an old woman dressed in plain clothes and a white headdress. She's seen pacing across the floor in front of the fireplace and standing at the window. Witnesses have also reported seeing a pair of disembodied feet. Even this bed has a story of its own and thought to contribute to some of the hauntings here. A previous owner was famous for earning a living by robbing from victims of the plague. The spirit of a woman is said to roam the attic. She's said to be in a distressed state and is thought to have killed herself after becoming pregnant with her master's child. Many have witnessed poltergeist activity, strange mists and eerie noises around the house. Are these strange happenings spirits trying to cross the paranormal divide or the result of overactive imaginations? We have 24 hours to find out. Would historian Leslie Smith have unearthed more fascinating information regarding the hall and its many ghostly tenants? The earliest part of the house is uncertain when was built, but thought to be about 1495 for the Brownlow family. And then in 1551, we have a double-decker timber frame building built. And it's so gorgeous, and it's a real show-off building. There was a particularly famous person who came and lived here with his family, and his name was Samuel Crompton. He was particularly famous for a brilliant idea. He was a weaver, you know, but he was also a man who played musical instruments, brilliant with an organ, brilliant with playing a violin, he knew about mathematics and he clearly knew about engineering as well. He wanted to make weaving that little bit easier and he did so by producing a spinning mule or a spinning jinny. And so protective was he of this device that he had made that in the particular part of the house that he was renting with his wife, he hid it away up corners and things so people couldn't see it. But some people even prepared to climb up ladders to try and get a look at it. Why? 
because it would make an enormous difference to this terrific labour that was the wealth of this area. I can tell you that actually it did go on to become a revolutionary way of making cloth and brought a great deal of wealth to this area. He sold his idea, I'm afraid, for only about £60. Evidence of his industry is still in this house. Now what about the ghosts? A lady in a woolen dress, poke bonnet, is seen moving around the house. A lady called Betty screams abuse at children and tells them to get out of the house. Feet are seen under the bed and a tall, elegant figure in a stovepipe hat or carrying it is seen moving around one of the top corridors. There are more ghosts than I'm letting on. There are more ghosts of tradition and certainly ghosts are seen here by visitors coming to see this extraordinary museum. And as the sun sets here at Hollithwood, Bolton, Lancashire, we're in for quite a remarkable night. What would parapsychologist Dr Kieran O'Keefe make of the history and various ghostly sightings attributed to the hall? One of the things I find absolutely fascinating about this place is the apparition of an old woman that's seen in this room but only seems to show herself to children and scares them to death. I mean, how horrible. It must be awful for them coming yeah. in, but unfortunately we don't have any children in the team uh, who could witness that sort of thing, but maybe it's an opportunity for you to try the marbles or try some sort of children's games, because whoever this spirit is, they obviously don't like children. That's a good idea, very, very good idea. What else fascinates you about this particular place? We can categorise the phenomena into two types apparition and then auditory phenomena and the auditory phenomena categorize it even further into just footsteps. What fascinates me is the number of apparitions. Um, normally when we investigate a place you'll maybe get one or two and you'll get a recurring apparition. Um, so the figure of a royalty that's seen in different rooms by different people. Here, depending on which room you go in, there's lots of different apparitions, you know, different descriptions, different people have seen them, there have been different reactions, and that's what fascinates me about this place. What other sort of phenomena uh, is witnessed here? One of the apparitions is a white mist that's seen in one of the corridors, and the great thing about this particular account is that it was a cleaner that originally saw it, and she was unaware of the story, didn't really know what she was seeing, and she actually tried to vacuum up this white mist. And it's just a nice little tidbit added onto the story that gives it some sort of credence. Normally you hear about apparition sightings and it's just people telling the story and they react, they're scared, that sort of thing. But for somebody to actually try and vacuum up a ghost, I don't know, it's just a nice little addition to the story that makes it more interesting. So if we see a white mist tonight, don't try and vacuum it. Don't That's get the vacuum a out. That's tip no. for tonight. Once again, joined by medium and psychic artist Brian Shepherd, we plan our initial foray into the Hall Inth Wood. Brian has already sketched a man he believes to be Samuel Crompton, who has strong connections with the Hall. Will we be able to raise the many spirits said to haunt its walls and give physical substance to their memories over the coming hours of our investigation? OK, so I've seen you walk away from us. Uh The most haunted team, joined by medium and psychic artist Brian Shepherd, are in Lancashire investigating the beguiling paranormal history of the Hall in Thwood, said to be alive with unexplained spiritual activity. We begin with our usual lit walk around to give ourselves an understanding of the layout of the building and perhaps encounter some of its ghostly occupants before darkness descends. What will the coming hours reveal? Gorgeous, gorgeous rooms. So what's your general feel as you, uh, about the whole house as you, as you well, it's step a, in? Well, it's a wonderful, wonderful house, but... Um, and I feel that it, it's, stra it's strange because... You, it, 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 it sounds stupid, but it feels inhabited. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you get... you do get... you get a hell of a presence in here. Um, especially when we walked into here, you know. Um, 
A, a female presence, certainly. How do you um, know? Do you see her? Or is it just it's it's a, a picture in your moment, mind? At the moment, you know, there's not a picture in my mind, but I feel it. I feel that mm -hmm. presence, okay? Um, and as I say, throughout the building, you know, it just feels inhabited, you know, so let's, let's give it some time okay. and see if, you know, we can come up with anything, to, you know, more specific than that, I suppose. Mm -hmm. As our lit walk around progresses, we move upstairs to a first floor bedroom where we make acquaintance with the spirit of Betty. Right, this is very interesting to me. I really want to know what you get in this room, who's in here, and why are they in here? Yes, ma'am. Come over this way. There's... Like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll say it's a female presence in this room. Quite agitated female, you right. know. Um, doesn't particularly want us in this room. Um, I, that's what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. I almost, I get, I get a feeling that there probably there had been children in this room or, or attempted to be in this room, and she's actually, you know, chastised them uh, through uh, for being in here when they when they shouldn't be. It's Is this her room? Yeah. It feels, well, it feels to be her room. I think it is. And that's the reason why she doesn't want us in here yeah, or the I, children. Well. I'm not sure, but certainly you get the, you know, that overwhelming feeling that, um, you know, she would try and eject children or people from the room. Um, almost, you know, a name is almost being suggested of, like, something like Bet Betsy or, or Betty, something, okay. something along okay. those lines. Any anyway. surname yet? Oh, gosh, no. Does she mean us harm when you say she doesn't want well, us in Well, uh, you know what? Only in that, you know, we're a nuisance uh, value to, to, to her in this room. I don't think, I don't, I don't pick up any, any, any real feeling of evil intent mm. as such, if that's what you But we're in. a nuisance, that's, so get out. We are, yeah, yeah, so get out of here, you know, and she might, she might well make, you, you know, there might be some activity, who knows, mm -hmm. um, if we were to remain in here. Um, but I... That's been going on the yeah. whole time. Uh, the what, fourth. Having just said that, we get that a strange noise. That's great. Um, if we were to remain in here, um, but I... That's been going on the yeah. whole time. Hello, Betty. Can you make that noise again for us? Betty, come on. It, we, we, we... We know you're here. I, um, I know we're an intrusion, but please, Make that noise again. If it were you, make that noise again. Betty, Betsy, Betty. Thank you. Thank you. Certainly a place to come back to. It is. Great stuff. I think there could be, I think that this could be very, very interesting room to, to come back to later on. As we head towards the top of the house with its attic bedroom, Brian apparently cites the apparition of Thomas Brownlow moving along the corridor. You know, I just coming up the stairs there, I, I saw the figure of a tall man, a tall gentleman. Whereabouts? Walk, well, as we were coming up the stairs, he was walking away from us and disappeared somewhere just down on our left-hand side, his doorway, but, you know, seemed to disappear within to the wall. What you does know. he look like? Tall, dark, well, long kind of frockish coat, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. and holding, so just grey hair, tall, gaunt man, grey hair, and holding a top hat, the looks ah, of it. OK. Who do you think he is? Uh, What's that noise? Is that some...? It was a really high-pitched one. As soon as you spoke to me, you got that wine. Yeah. Right back to us. Ah, there you go. What the? That's strange. That's very strange. Did you hear that, Kim? I didn't, didn't hear that one. No, I didn't 
creaked on the stairs oh, just before. Almost like so a sort of little yell, or almost like yeah. a, an owl yeah, type. Yeah, it was. It was like, oh. There it's again. It's again. Yeah, it's like, an, like that. If there is a spirit here with us, please can you make the noise again? It's going. You get it. Where do you think it's, it's coming from? No idea. It's beyond. It's beyond. I'm us. hearing it in my right. You're hearing it there? Right. I'm hearing it in mine, so we're, we're split. I can hear it over there. It's coming I'm, off his own. All right, let's I'm, I'm let's hearing it again. this way. Thank you for this. Please could you call out again, but much louder if you can. Use all your energy. Please make a noise. OK, so I've seen you walk away from us. Uh, <gasps> that was a voice. OK, so I've seen you walk away from us. Uh, that was a voice. Do you know who this man is? Tom, Tom. Could be Thomas, Thomas. That's the most immediate thing I get. Thomas. 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 If it is you, Thomas. Then please make a sound. Make, make a sound. You, you made a sound just now. If it, if it were you, that was like, well, it could have been a voice. Could you do that again for us? Nothing. 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 We continue onto the bedroom, scene of many sightings of a young woman. There's a presence in this room. There's, the, there's a young girl. Uh, there's a young girl. There's something, young? About, there's something about there's something about a girl harming herself. Good, no, no, she died. Um, this baby. This is a sad little story here. Cold up here, too. Yeah, it is cold. It is. She's here now. She's trapped here. What happened um, to her? She, in some way, and I, and I can't see how, she has... Um, she obviously took her own life. Why? And I think, I think that was because she was pregnant, um, out of, out of wedlock, probably, you know, father was, so. There's that noise again. Maybe I'm right, who knows, I, <laughs> I can hear the noise again. Mm. Can you make that noise again? We're friends, we mean you no harm. We mean no harm here at all. Could you make that noise again? I heard that then. I'm getting Mary. Mary, is it you? Mary? Mary? Oh, she's saddened. Oh, Mary, come towards us. Come on. Come towards me. Come right towards me. Come on, I'll give you a hug. Come on, sweetheart. Don't be frightened. We don't mean you any harm. Can you make a really loud noise for us so that we know that you're here? Yes. Mary, I know you're here. I know your plight was a tragic one and that you took your own life. The father was someone you, you should never have been involved with. Mary, if you're here, please let us know. Pleased with our successes so far, we switch to night vision. What shocks await us over the coming hours? What's moving? What's moving? What's moving? Something's moving. Goodness. Eager to take advantage of the plethora of activity Brian has already sensed within the hall, we prepare to hold a seance. Around the table, Carl, Stuart, Brian, Kath, Leslie and I, watched by an ever-vigilant Dr. Kieran O'Keefe. I 
do, actually. I, I sense the presence, almost oddly enough, of, of a man. I believe this to be Samuel. Samuel. Um, yes. Yes, and Mary. Mary. I believe. Yes. A saddened man, Samuel. As I sit here, I can see him contemplate his future, his business future, a failing business. I could see her hide something uh, in this room. I don't know what it was. You can't see it? No. She hid something. What's away her name? From, uh, her, her name is yeah. Mary. Show us what you think of Luddites. Where is that coming from? Show us what you think of Luddites. He did. That's exactly it. Where is that coming from? Are they walking around the table? They're with us now, yes. Very frightened Again, of the Luddites. He was very, very frightened of the Luddites. The what Luddites the heck came are the Luddites? to hide they... These marched to come and smash up anything that looked like factory equipment that was not man-made, do you see? Oh. In the sense of anything that took a job away from a man, that's what oh, I really mean. And they came did. and smashed them up like art quite smells and things. Yes, yes. And they came to this area and they'd be terrified, their wonderful invention, the spinning ginny or the meal had been taken. They tried so hard together. He invented this thing. Yes. Is that what they were hiding? Yes, it was. Oh. Away from the Luddites. And that's true. Okay. He, and, he, and his, he and his wife, although a sad story. He lost his wife early on. Yes, he did. She was oh, only a youngish woman. Yes. <gasps> and I, going. Oh, my Samuel, you, you're here, aren't you? I felt something touch me on the shoulder. You're so... He's being so protect... Yes. Cool. You're being so protective, but come forward. Let us know you're here. I say it again. We're friends. We come as friends. Mm. Should we put our fingers on the glass and see if he has a message? Also, One hand on the table. Uh, also be aware Samuel is a musician. <clears throat> yes, played the he violin. He played the violin and mm. composed ah. music, so you could ask. <gasps> Samuel, good evening. Please push the glass. Do you have a message for us? Do you have a message? Eight, nine, no, goodbye. <laughs> it's almost like he's, he's sussing it out, isn't he? Seems like he's having a look, okay. which is what a scientist would do. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. Samuel, please give us a message in letters on the board. Push the glass to each letter to spell out a message. You know what to do. Please help us. Is that a number? I can't see what it is. Goodbye. I don't understand it. Our seance has seemingly made contact with Samuel Crompton, inventor of the spinning mule. Apparently, he is unsettled by our presence, believing us to be Luddites intent on destroying his invention. Will he take more aggressive steps to force us from the house? What's moving? What's moving? What's moving? A team are investigating the Hall in Thwood in Bolton, once home to the inventor Samuel Crompton, whose spirit we seem to be in contact with, but it would appear he believes us to be Luddites, hell-bent on the destruction of his invention, the spinning mule. Kieran and I move back to the attic bedroom, where we find some interesting heat anomalies. Are they the manifestation of Samuel's spirit, or a more sinister phantom held within the house? Under uh, Wigan's feet. Have you? Yeah, I had it there as you walked in. Yeah, this is all recording, so. Right, what is it? 
Um, hot to cold? It's, hot, it's warm uh -huh. relative to everything else around it. Oh. But I'm just wondering. Would there be a what pipe? What I'd to do is touch it, yeah. Where is it? Here. It's right in front of Wigan. Here? Yeah. Go to your right slightly with your hand. It feels warm there. Does it feel slightly warm? It doesn't. F there? Funny thing is, it doesn't actually feel warm on the floorboards, but the but the air above it feels warm. Right there, Kieran. Yeah. Yeah, I can feel it. You can definitely feel. You come here. Warm. See, let me. Do, you come here and feel it. Okay. Ever so slightly. Yeah, but it's there. But feel the floorboards. Yeah, it's cool that it's warm cool. coming up, isn't it? Maybe. That's, there's, there's, there's no warmth coming up because you would feel it. You'd feel it on the floorboards? On the floorboards and you'd feel it through, through here. Ever the sceptic, Kieran determines to track down the source of the heat anomalies by ruling out any rational explanation. So we move downstairs and turn on the lights that hang directly below the attic bedroom. Uh, I'd like to leave these on for a bit. Yeah go upstairs again and check again, knowing where each of them are placed, check the rest of the floor. I didn't get them when we were up there. Yeah. I didn't get any other sorts, but I'd like to double check to be 100% sure because I wasn't looking out for them. Okay. But if they're not there, that's very odd. Meanwhile, Carl had returned to the bedroom where Brian had sensed the presence of Betty. come in, uh, in here on my own. I've had a, um, a weird feeling about this place. I'm in the bedroom, by the way. In fact, this is the bedroom. You'll see um, blacked out windows. That's not because there's light outside, it's because there are some um, sort of lights outside, street lights. And what the f was that? Whoa. Okay, that was quick. Um, Sort of lights outside, street lights. And what the f was that? Whoa. It sounds like a child. It's coming from there. It's coming from here. I know it's pretty obvious being a cop, but well, I'll tell you what. Right now, I'm gonna pull this cop. All I'm gonna do is move this cop. I've got a wide shot camera, which I'm gonna use to hopefully what the f the f was that if you are here please do something else make a sound rap on the wood again tell me to get out No way, it's not the... The, the, the cot's moving, I know, the, the cot's moving, the cot's moving, where is it? The cot's... It's right there, actually I'm going to move it so you can see there's no, there's no strings attached to it, there's no... That's me that's made that rock, I'm going under the bed. Oh shit, where am I? I can't even see where I'm going. Right, I'm under the bed. There was no one under that bed. I mean, I know there's not, but I mean, this is just a few guys at home. Can I see them both? I can see that in there. Oh, <laughs> the f Okay, if you're here, look. That was a f noise. Um, I'm actually going to go, because I'm shit scared. Oh. What's moving? What's moving? What's moving? Something's moving. Something's moving behind me. Something's moving behind me. Something's moving behind me. What is it? The f*** is it? Distinctly unsettled by the apparent poltergeist activity and convinced that something is in the room with him, Carl ends his vigil. Yeah. It's very, very subtle. 
there's definitely a difference. Uh, but there is a there is a slight warmth over on the far wall, which might be one of the other spots. Why don't you have another look and see if there's one near the wall where there's definitely another spot? Oh. Mm. If you stand to your right, you get over to the, mm. the corner. Cause, yeah, there's a slight source. You know where you stepped in? Yeah. There's a slight source there. And that's it, just those two. Hmm. Okay. Solved. I was disappointed that the temperature anomalies we had seen in the attic were nothing more than heat rising from lights below, but I'm keen to continue to try and establish further contact with the spirits of the house. So I asked Leslie and Kath to join me on the ground floor while Stuart descends on his own to the cellar. I just... Pan round there now, so you can just see what's going on. Okay. I need to be very careful. Is that a wall there? Yep. Have a look behind there. What have we got there? Cabinets, um, planks or ladders or something like that. Uh, the lights you can see there. It's all the electrical systems that they've got here. So. Uh, yeah, so it's all good so far. Okay. Water pumps and that. Okay, dunk. And over there is the door I've just come through. So that's it in a nutshell, really. Yeah, that's it. See what's on about in the cellar. On his Jack Jones as usual. If there's a lady present in here, please can you make a noise? Sorry, I'll stand still. Can you. There. What's that? Yeah, that was a whistle. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Mistress, come to us. We ask you most heartily, would that be of good kindness to us? And make that noise again, please. Over there. Oh, it's a bloody stupid statue. I have lost it. Let's look. Just looked. I saw shut that in it. Yep, yeah, that won't move. That's that. What else have we got? What's behind here? I can't see a bloody thing. It's absolutely pitch black. Like pins and needles. Have you? In the end of her fingers. Not either hand, just swapped hands. And either hand, you put your hand out. It's, it's almost like. What, there in that particular space? I don't know, it's just like a bit staticky. I feel that. Like buzzing. Feel that? Feel that. How bizarre. How weird is that? And. Warm, it feels slightly warm oh, too. That's strange. Oh my God. It's like a column of heat. Oh, it's like electrified. It is. It's fabulous. I wonder if there's somebody, if we've got a figure of a child or something, some energy. Oh, I've never felt that before. Listen, I've never... Can you feel it? Little yes. Little pins and needles, like yes. tingling in the end of your fingers. Is there a little girl or a little boy here? It feels hot. It, it feels hot. hot. It feels... It feels really hot. And now, when I came in the room, it was placid. But it's not placid now. It feels a bit tense, doesn't it? Mm. But it's as if we've got a child. Now, all of us have gone to the same height, which is interesting. Wow. It's as if there's a child here. I haven't moved a bit. Ah, oh, but there, gosh. Listen, knocking, knocking. I just heard it. Is there somebody here? Listen to that knocking. Come on, darling. It's walking around, it's walking locked. <gasps> okay, um, I've just heard another moan or a groan or something like that. Thank you very much. Um, if you are here, could you please show me a sign? Is it Mr. Crompton? Are you here? Um, I don't know what the name's um, to ask out for, to be honest with you. Um, 
because I don't really know the research and stuff and that what's going on it. I don't really like to know, in all honesty, because um, it spoils it then for the event. So oops, oops. I'm gonna second. The cabinet doors just opened. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna second. Now, that, what did that open for? I closed that. That was closed. I bloody looked at all that. The split vigil has generated some alarming audibles, which give us cause to believe that the climax of our investigation might be more frightening than we could have imagined. What further activity shall we experience as the night draws to an end? What the f was that? <laughs> Most haunted are investigating the Hall in Thwood in Bolton. We're in the midst of a split vigil with Leslie, Kath and I on the ground floor and Stuart on his own beneath us in the cellar. We've all witnessed some strange and disturbing activity, but the night is about to become scarier still. That's just, that's locked. I'm gonna put the key, I'm gonna put that in my pocket now. Okay. If you are here, please do something. Watch this, I need to be careful now because Oh, what's that there? There's a reflection. Hello? Who's that? Who's that? Hold on. Hold on. I'm hearing more and more groans now. Um, I'm actually starting to get freaked out, to be honest with you, because earlier on... <gasps> Listen, oh, I'm catching something on screen. 6.25. make two knocks for us if you're really here. Make them loud. What was, was that somebody's that? No, it wasn't mine. Was it yours? <laughs> that was cool. My that was cool. Did you hear like a little moan? Yes. I did. Come on, darling. We have got so many more like a man to go to in the place. <laughs> I don't like it very well. Come on. Whoever you are, please make that noise again. As the door opened, something actually went in front of the screen. Now, I don't know why this is happening because I've got the key. This is the key. I don't understand what's going on. I don't know whether to be scared, I don't know whether to run, I don't know what the hell to do. There's a lot. Hold up, right, hold. Right, okay, some. Let me lock this again. Come on! I'm just showing you at home. I've got the key for that. The banging's coming from this cabinet now. I'm, 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 I'm banging this. There's, something is definitely down here with me now. Something is down here with me now. I don't know what it is, I can't see it. Was it that that was in front of the screen, the orb? I don't know. I'm not too sure. I've still got the key, and there's more bangings going on. Just to let you know, this is the size of the room that we're in. Uh, yeah. I've just left it ajar, you know. If there's somebody here with us now, there is a spirit person with us. Shut this door. Oh, can you hear it? Yeah. It's like footsteps yeah. outside. Just like that, you know, when it was pacing around? Yeah. Is it in here with us or is it no, outside? It's out there. Oh, Make God. a noise. Come and talk to us. Bang on the door. Oh, it's got two lights. What is what? Two orbs. What the f was that? Oh my Bang on the door. Oh, it's got two lights. What is what? 
Two orbs. What the f was that? What? All right, Les, all right. Holy crap. It's probably because a bird. <laughs> what the bloody hell is that a bird? What a bird would you like? It's up there on a bleeding I'm so door. crushed. Wait. That was amazing. That was amazing. Just so that it came from that window, didn't it? Oh, oh we're up a level. Few... God, look, Kim, look, Kim, we're up on a level. We're on the first floor. If there's anybody here, I'm, I now keep thinking I'm going to see a face there because it's everybody's fright, isn't it? That you're mm -hmm. going to see a face at the window. There's no trees or branches out no. there. We all heard that, don't we? Should we get out of here now? Yeah, let's. Earlier on when I was down here um, with Carl, we asked for nasty, evil things to happen. Now, I'm just going to... OK, thank you. Right. Thank you. You don't need to be that bad. There's definitely something down here with me now. 100%. I'm not even going to bother opening that door because I don't want to see what's behind it. Stuart was brave and spent the remainder of the evening in the cellar to get more paranormal activity. But alas, nothing else occurred to Stuart or the rest of the team. I was interested to learn what parapsychologist Dr. Kieran O'Keefe made of all the noises and activity we had witnessed over the hours we had spent in the house and what explanation he would have for their cause. Most Haunted investigated this particular location and I'm very impressed with the way the whole team has progressed in trying to look for alternative explanations. A good example was on one of the vigils when we appeared to discover a heat source coming from the floor. It feels warm there. Does it feel slightly warm? It doesn't. Fit. Funny thing is, it doesn't actually feel warm on the floorboards, but the but the air above it feels warm. And we decided maybe we should investigate and see if it's coming from underneath the particular room. Now, with the thermal imager, also with the very critical way of thinking that the team now has, we're able to decipher that perhaps what we're looking at is a heat source from a light bulb from the room beneath. Okay. Solved. On another occasion, Yvette, Leslie and Kath were investigating a different part of the location. Oh, was that somebody's that? stomach? No, it wasn't mine. Was it yours? <laughs> that was cool. On the same vigil, they went into another room and they heard a loud tap coming from outside. What the f was that? <laughs> I'm slightly sceptical of this. We can't discount the possibility that uh, an animal or something from outside could have caused the tapping. Holy crap. It was probably because of a bird. But I'm really reaching for an explanation. All in all, the investigation wasn't that fruitful in terms of phenomena. However, there are a couple of highlights, a couple of really interesting phenomena that I still need to get my teeth into. The Hall in Thwood was certainly a beautiful and enchanting property, but in the hours of darkness, it had become an immensely frightening place. Had we made contact with its spiritual occupants? It's up to you to decide. Until next time, sleep tight. What's moving? What's moving? What's moving? Something's moving.